I'm getting my camera ready because uh, I literally saw Yoda walking down the street, but I couldn't turn around because I had to go pick this guy's TV up. But uh, I'm hoping to see him on the way out of here. There he is, there he is. Here's Yoda again. Hey Yoda! Hey! Yeah! Alright guys, I'm about to uh, bust out the new $300 PCP compressor that they have from Yong Hang. So the way to order one is go ahead and type in walmart.com, go to Walmart. Now you can get these off eBay as well for the same price, but I like to buy my stuff from Walmart because then I know it's not counterfeit. It's not a generic compressor that someone just spray painted the logo on the side of. So I'm going to put PCP compressor. All right. Okay, so right here you see they got their little supply of PCP compressors. So I'm not seeing the price right here. But basically, uh, you can see this one does not have the Yong Hang logo on the side. And we'll take a closer look at this in a second. But if it doesn't say Yong Hang on it, don't order it. And I'll tell you why. So every single review that I read on these compressors where they bought the generic one, they would say that like, oh, my valve broke and my friend was able to fix it or the relay uh, kick you know stopped working and fortunately I was able to uh, fix it by doing this or that and then after they fix whatever part broke first then the compressor ran fine but um, definitely if you order one of these that does not say Yong Hang on the side then something's gonna break and you're gonna have to fix it yourself so definitely order one with says Yong Hang on it and that's what I did and as you can see it was only $284 uh, free shipping and the price on this goes up and down every day, but uh, it'll be under three hundred dollars and Really a great deal now. I have read lots of reviews on this young hang and they work great And I'm going to show you everything you need to know about operating one of these and uh, what you need to do Okay, if you do want to get in the PCP game and you're not ready to spend two hundred eighty four dollars on a pump Because you can actually get some pretty nice guns for two hundred eighty four dollars right now go ahead and uh, Get one of these right here. This is a forty nine dollar PCP pump and I did a review on this basically it's a Chinese pump and these work great I actually uh, someone that watched my review said that he got this to replace his hill pump and he actually compared it to his hill pump and said that it worked almost as good and uh, hill pumps are the best ones you can get so uh, these work just fine 48 bucks you're in the PCP game and you can start shooting okay you may have seen that little thing just pop up someone just left a comment on one of my videos let's check it out okay so when someone leaves a comment um, I see it right here and I always go on there and say something back to them because I really like talking to people. All right here, so let's see what this guy says. So this guy watched my Y-Rock video uh, and he says, is this just a rich guy that has money to blow on air guns? Question mark? Seriously though. Okay, um, actually I'm totally not rich but I can see why you might think that. So this right here, you guys have seen the HW44. So this is what it looks like. Whoa. So that's a thousand dollar gun right there and it's super nice. I'll just stop so you right there. Okay, so I just bought a thousand dollar gun and later in this video I show my three thousand dollar airwolf. Um but I'm totally not rich. I drive like a super crappy car. Um I live in a mobile home and uh I just really love air guns and um part of the reason I have a little bit of extra money because I'm not married. I have no kids and I got no bills and so uh basically I can spend my paycheck uh on air guns and so that's what I do and uh, also when I buy a gun like this okay this is a thousand dollars right here now I'm gonna shoot it for a little bit but I'm gonna keep it nice and I'm gonna sell it when I'm done with it and then I'm gonna get 900 bucks out of it so really uh, I have a certain amount of money that I roll with uh, with the air guns and I just keep it rolling and uh, it's really awesome and then I can uh, own and try many many air guns because you can sell them on the used air gun classifieds and or eBay or whatever you want and you're ready to rock and roll all right for all you newbies out there this is a uh, PCP pump, and uh, you need one of these to operate one of these guns. This is a PCP gun, so let's just see right here. That right there is a meter on my AP-16, and basically we got to get this up to uh, 
300 bar. Now, one bar equals 15 PSI, so that's 4,500 PSI. So you can't pump one of these up with a normal air compressor, that's for sure. Uh, these are just some cool PCPs I got. This is uh, about the best pistol you can get, 22 caliber AP-16. Uh, you can see my review on that. Really, really worth the money. This is $1,000, though. This right here, I've uh, never even shot yet. This right here is going to be my 177 caliber Y-Rock HW-44. And so uh, I did a kind of a review preview on this where I tell you how to order one of these bad boys. And uh, if you want one of these without a fixed moderator on there, then you want to watch that video. Anyway, um, that's the moderator right there. This is also a gun that costs about $1,000, uh, but totally worth it. This gun is probably even more accurate than the AP-16 we just looked at. From what I hear, everyone that's tested this gun gets a one-hole group uh, in their review or in their test. And, and so, basically, I think this is about the best PCP, most accurate PCP pistol that you can get without looking at those uh, Styres and those Olympic rifle pistols, I mean. So, that's super cool. You know, the really coolest thing about this that really stands out to me is this is an ergonomic grip, but they formed it in such a way that it's ergonomic for both your right and left hand. So you can use this right or left-handed, or maybe you want one of these in both hands, and uh, you got full ergonomic grip like that. So this is uh, really cool. Can't wait to shoot that and give you guys a nice review. Also, if you're new to the uh, PCP or the air gun shooting world, uh, basically Hawkeye, right here, this is a Hawkeye scope. And these guys uh, make scopes that are specifically designed for air guns. And uh, I only use Hawkeye scopes. There are more expensive scopes, like uh, Viper MTCs, I think Ted uses those. Um, but, you know, those are five, $600. So these Hawkeyes, they have an AMS reticle, which I'll show you in a second. But it's specifically designed for air gun bullet drops. And uh, I'll just show you the two main Hawkeye scopes that I use. Now this right here is a basic Hawkeye scope. They're all going to have the same reticle. It's got an etched reticle. So that means that they scratch the thing in the glass instead of having a wire inside there. So you get a real thin crosshair. That's another thing I like about it. And also, basically this is about $200. It's going to weigh about one pound. Maybe a little over one pound. This right here is more of your example of a more expensive Hawkeye scope. So this is going to only cost you, though, between three and $400. Now, this might be a scope that sells for $450 on Pyramid Air, but you can buy this brand new off of eBay for, you know, $350. So that's what I do all the time. So I might have paid about $300 for this, and it's got all the bells and whistles. Super nice. These are like metal. You know, it's just, just like super awesome. So anyway, the only reason that I don't like to use these usually is because this weighs almost two pounds. And uh, I'd much rather have the same reticle with this guy that weighs like one pound so that, that's why I use these the most and they only cost $199 versus uh, $350 yeah so here's that reticle right there it's got half mil dots which is another thing I like that's your uh, AMX reticle so you can get any Hawkeye scope with any reticle you want but I use that AMX because I like it it's great to have mil dots when you're shooting air guns so if you got your PCP air gun and you got your compressor right there and you're all ready to go and you're going to bust this out and plug it into 110 and pump up your gun, uh, not so fast. You can't actually do it like that. And let me tell you why. You're going to need some of this and this is a uh, hydraulic fluid. So uh, I went all over to all the different auto parts stores and uh, this is not expensive. This is like $20 right here. But, um, you know, I was thinking like I'm just going to go buy a quart. No one's going to sell you a quart of hydraulic fluid. Because hydraulic fluid goes in like tractors and stuff like that. Here's a couple things. Okay. I went to all the auto parts stores. And uh, O'Reilly's. Okay. Craig and Auto Parts is now O'Reilly's. They have hydraulic fluid number 46 and hydraulic fluid number 32. So I read online that people like to use hydraulic fluid number 46. So if you go to O'Reilly's, <clears throat> it's about $15. And you can just get a smaller thing than this. And it'll say hydraulic fluid 46 on it. And so, if you have a choice between 32 and 46, get 46. Now, this right here was uh, all they had at Walmart at 11.30 at night. And so, I went ahead and got this, and this looks pretty good. It says, uh, it's general purpose formulator provides rust. Anyway, this is general purpose hydraulic oil. Okay, and that's what you want to put in your compressor. So, you need one of these. And the other thing you're going to need is a big old bucket like this because you're actually going to have to put some uh, cold water or ice water in here is the best, but put some uh, water in here and it's actually going to suck 
water out of this bucket the entire time and spit it out another thing and that's what's going to keep your compressor cool last thing you need is a funnel like this it's actually only 97 cents so i just uh, got one of these funnels so maybe not make so big of a mess okay now this water that you're uh, sucking through this compressor is also going to be coming getting spit out a second hose and so you're going to want a, a junky bucket like this or you can just put it down your drain to get rid of the uh, water that's going to be coming out definitely though you should probably get a brand new bucket for the inlet hose the water that's going in so you're not sucking any weird stuff into your uh, cooling system there now the whole reason I'm doing this review right now is because I want to pump my 4500 psi PCP tank up and so uh, with this compressor I'm going to be able to pump this up to uh, 4500 psi and then I know when I drive to the forest tomorrow hour away I'm not going to run out of air and uh, like you know it's 12 o'clock at night right now I don't have to go to the scuba shop you know I can go shooting tomorrow no problems at all pump it up myself. It's going to be really awesome. Looks like uh, I got some hoses. That's probably my inlet and outlet water pump hoses to keep my thing cool like I just mentioned. Uh, that's probably my AC adapter. High pressure air pump. So uh, I get this bag with, uh, oh it looks like all kinds of neat parts in there. Well, that came very well packed in that little crate that they made in there. And uh, this is definitely heavy. I know it's hard to tell how big these are from the picture, but let me just see. This is what it looks like next to an AP-16. And so, uh, you know, it's about the size of a bread box, I'd say. Uh, maybe a teeny bit bigger. And, uh, hey, kitty. You guys might remember my cat. Hey, come here. <clears throat> you guys might remember my cat. She was a little kitten about six months ago, and... She just had babies, so let's check those out. Alright, so what else do I want to tell you about this young hang pump here? This is actually Tasha and Luke, boy and girl. And uh, there's another one back there, but I wasn't going to grab all of them. I'm probably going to have to go ahead and read the instructions on this real fast to uh, tell where everything goes, but let's just see if I can wing it here. Well, first of all, I'm just going to say this is super sturdy, okay? Very, very nice. All metal. And then, uh, it has these uh, almost like suction cup, heavy shock absorbing feet on here. So it's almost like when you stick it on the table, it's definitely going to stay where you put it. So that's cool. Looks like we got a on-off switch here. And... Uh, I'm not sure, I'm going to have to find this out, but on the forums I read that the 220 volt versions of this, because you can get this in 110, I got the 110, or 220, the 220 would have an automatic shutoff, and the 110 don't, but they were saying that when you don't have an automatic shutoff, watch out there, it's actually better, because then you can, you know, really ramp your stuff up to whatever you want it, and, and also, the pressure gauges can be off a couple hundred on these digitals, so like, it may think it's pumping you up to uh, 3,000 when you're only getting to 28. So if you don't have the automatic shutoff, that's cool because then you can just uh, keep an eye on your air gun and do whatever you want with this thing. What do you think about the compressor? Tasha. Okay. We got a nice pressure here, gauge here that goes all the way up to 6,000 bar. Pretty awesome, but it uh, looks like you don't want to go past... Hmm, that's weird. Well... I'm sure you can uh, use it into the red, apparently, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. We're going to try this out, and we'll see what happens there to that pressure gauge. So uh, I just got to find out which of these is in and which is out, and then uh, we got to figure out where to put the oil on here. Okay, attention. Please replace the breathing rod before compressor start. So uh, definitely, I'm going to need to read the instructions on this. These cats are uh, only about three weeks old. or uh, Actually, these cats are only about five weeks old, so they're still checking everything out. They don't get out much. Uh, so let's see here. Can okay, I take a break and read this? So this says when it is used for inflating slightly larger container, the cooling water should be changed every 30 minutes. Okay, that's good to know. The machine oil should be checked regularly. Make sure the oil level is above the upper edge of the red point. So we'll find that. If the color of the machine oil becomes dark and black, it should be changed in time. So the thing is, what you should actually do is change the oil on this every time you run it. That's what the supermost animal mechanic would ever do. So uh, you can do that because you got a giant thing of hydraulic fluid. So just dump it out and dump it back in every time you run it. Okay, so here's the oil level indicator. Okay, well that's neat. 
So I'm going to fill the oil up to this. There's a window right here, and I'm just going to fill right to the middle of that red dot, uh, as indicated right there. All right, and uh, Luke's going to help me get that all going here. Hey, Luke, are you going to help me with that oil? Okay, so when you're filling your hydraulic oil, you have to be sure not to get it on your cat. If there's cats around. Where'd you guys put my funnel at? I think it's time to put the kitties back, so, uh, alright, I'll put them back for you. Come on, you guys. Okay. Good guys. Okay, so I took my cap off. I'm going to put a nice clean funnel right here. Okay, I got my hydraulic oil and uh, kind of disturbing. It was uh, opened when I uh, took the cap off. So I'll just hope that there's hydraulic oil in there. Okay, I'm going to pour it in and you got to keep an eye on it. You don't put too much. Uh, of course, if you do, you just turn the compressor upside down, but dump it out. But you got to get right to the middle of this red dot right here. Okay, so I poured too much, so now I have to like take this outside and dump it out a little bit. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> I might have got lucky. Okay, so looking right here, I see that lucky me, it's okay to be in this green right here, a little teeny bit above the, the red dot. So you want to go to the top of the red dot. Okay, so that's what, that's what I got right here. So I got lucky right there. And I didn't pour. Now that was just a couple splashes of oil filled that sucker right up. So, and as you can see, okay, this is hydraulic oil right here that I spilled, and uh, it's nice and clear. So, uh, if this starts turning black, you know, you'd be in pretty short, poor shape. Definitely put a towel down when you do this because I thought I'd get away with not having a towel, and you know, I made a huge mess just now. I'm uh, reading the instructions, definitely read the instructions if you get one of these uh, or watch this video, either one. So, Number one is take the product out and install the hose at the air inlet. Okay, now this might just look like a normal oil cap thing or whatever, but uh, it actually says on here, please replace this one with a breathing rod before compressor starts. So I'd say this right here is your cap that you put on when you're storing the compressor so no oil leaks out should it get put on its side or something. But uh, this right here comes in the bag and this right here must be your breathing rod. So. Uh, when I'm using the compressor, I'm just going to go ahead and screw this in here. Alright, I just got that hand tightened in there really nice. Okay, so I just have to find the air outlet on this thing. So, where's the air push out of on here? Let's see. Okay, so if you're reading the instructions and you don't know what they're talking about, uh, this has all the parts labeled. So, I'm going to find the air. Okay, so it doesn't want to tell me where the air outlet is in the instructions. <laughs> so, let's see here. Oh, look right there. It says... Number 46, hydraulic oil, just like I said. Okay, so that's cool. So I am going to use the general purpose hydraulic oil today because uh, I've heard of people just putting motor oil in there from their Volvo. Uh, and, and that works if you just need to pump your thing up real fast. But I'm going to go ahead and get that 46 and, and use that. So it's not really going to tell me like where the air outlet is. Um, so I'm just going to have to guess. And uh, this is a really awesome air hose, okay? This is like metal and like totally gnarled and looks like a real uh, high quality piece of machinery here. So uh, I'm not really, oh, I bet you put a filter in here and it comes with, comes with these filters right here. So this probably dries out the air. So this is looking better and better. You'd probably want to put some of that Teflon tape on here too. Okay guys, so when I'm doing this, I like to make sure this tape's all clean. Get a nice sharp pair of scissors so you can snip a nice little thing off there. Now when you're doing your fill probe and when you're... Uh, putting this in everything anytime you're doing your PCP stuff okay you don't want to get your PCP tape past the top of those threads right there because this actually this one has a big piece of metal but usually when you're doing your fill probe you don't want a little piece of that Teflon tape to get in where you're blowing your air gun up and so when you wrap these just make sure that they're down you know from the end so they don't get anything in there Okay, I got that like three quarters of the way in there, and I don't know if I'm going to strip it out or whatever, so I'm going to stop screwing that. All right, guys, so I just uh, screwed this in too tight and uh, completely stripped this out, uh, and so I'm sure I 
you know, damage this block so uh, that my entire air compressor is no good now. So I managed to wreck this air compressor before I even was able to start it. Next time, I'll be more careful when I screw this in. All right, so uh, I was in a hurry to get this done, and I went ahead and didn't even look. Inside here, the threads are actually super, super uh, shallow, and so you're only supposed to screw that thing in like maybe halfway. And so when I overscrewed it, I just ripped out the aluminum right there and uh, jack this thing all up so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and order a new one of these and uh, hopefully I'll get it in about a week or so and I'll finish this review my review video for the young hand compressor was going pretty good until I destroyed the compressor hold on a second so I destroyed the compressor by uh, screwing that thing in too tight using the wrong tool for the job and uh, being in too much of a hurry so definitely I said it before in the video but read the instructions and take your time with this thing and uh, don't do what I did and, and wreck it like that. So what am I going to do now with this uh, compressor? Well, I can't really return it, even though I'd probably get away with it, but that would be the wrong thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the air gun classifieds, tell the dudes on there what happened, and uh, one of those old timers will say, no problem, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make you a new block or, or you can screw it in or, or else send me the compressor, you know, I'll sell it for 200 bucks or something and some guy will you know morph that in and it'll be all good so uh i'll order another one of these and uh, we'll finish this review next time so uh, what are the air gun classifieds all right now there's uh, going to be three top ones that come up and these are the ones that i've been using for years air gun nation american air gun classifieds right here and finally, yellow, good old yellow, which is now called uh, airgunwarriors.com. Now, my cat is not going to like this, but I am going to show you what the ML does not do. Sorry.